So you want to get the most out of your Ryzen 7 9700X. Well, this is the right video for you. This CPU is a beast. First of all, great buy because it's also the CPU in my personal system. So it's going to be an Android tutorial, which I have to heart especially. But this thing is already pretty efficient, runs pretty cool, but you can make it run even cooler with even less power consumption all while performing better, giving you more FPS and better performance in productivity as well, and also making your PC pretty much fully silent. Now, before we get right into it, few disclaimers, okay? So this is gonna work for every single motherboard out there in the market. It doesn't matter your brand, or the chipset. What I have here today is an MSI X670 motherboard, but if you have an ASUS, Gigabyte, ASRock, Biostar, doesn't matter, it's gonna work for every single one of them. However, the names are gonna be a bit different, even though the numbers are the same. So I will try to say the different name as well as in the video, but if you can't understand, just go in my CPU and revolting playlist and cross-reference with the names there and you will be able to follow the tutorial because I have many motherboards on the channel. One last thing that you need to promise me before we start is if the video ends up being helpful, you will drop a like and subscribe to the channel because I'm trying to cover every single CPU and GPU and to show you guys how to overclock or undervolt all of them. And the only way I can do it is if you guys help me. So with that said, let's go ahead, let's go in the BIOS, let's start tuning. And here we are in the BIOS. Now, the first thing you need to do is going to the advanced options in your BIOS. Now, if you have an MSI motherboard, it's F7. It may be F2 or something different, depending on your motherboard. Now, today we're going to have two different settings. First one is going to be dynamic option, which I recommend for most of you guys. It's going to be the best for gaming, and it's going to be uh, basically the most balanced one. First off, I'm going to just tell you a preset, then show you how you can tweak it for yourself. Then our second preset is going to be the static one, in case you want to have the lowest possible latency lowest possible power consumption and have a slightly better productivity performance, okay? So let's go into the OC tab, which is gonna be called overclocking or AI tweaker or something along those lines. We have a different motherboard. And the first thing we wanna do is enable our XMP or EXPO. So you just enable that and hopefully you have 6,000 megahertz RAM because that's the best performing one. I also have a dedicated tutorial for RAM overclocking on AM5 in case you wanna tweak it more play with the FCLK, for example, push it over 2000. Now this you want to test separately because if your XMP is unstable, you may think it's your undervolt, but it's actually the XMP. After we've done that, we want to go and do the actual undervolt. Now for that, we're going to settings, advanced, AMD overclocking. Now this tab is going to be the same, no matter your motherboard vendor. Now we accept this, go into it, and we want to go into the precision boost overdrive setting and put it to advanced. Now, once we're here, what we wanna do is go into the curve optimizer option and go in all cores. We then wanna put it to negative and put 20. Now, if you just wanna copy my settings, copy this. And you can basically close the tutorial if you just wanna undervolt it because you're now done. So drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys again. But in case you wanna stay, I'm gonna tell you how to make this better and also have a few extra settings for performance. Now, 20 is gonna work for 99% of CPUs, but if you're very unlucky, this may be unstable for you. If this is unstable for you, you wanna put 10. Or if you wanna spend some time testing, 15 may also work. Now, the higher this number, the lower the power consumption, the lower the temperature, and the higher the performance, because the curve is gonna boost a bit different. If you feel lucky, you can push it all the way to 30, but test this out because most CPUs are not going to be able to do 30 stable, unfortunately. So I leave 20. Now, if you're doing this just for efficiency, this is fine. You just need to do the undervolt. But if you're doing this for maximum performance, there is another important setting, and that is to unlock your TDP. So we go back in the overclocking tab, and if we take a look in advanced CPU configuration, we're going to have configure TDP or TDP. Again, it's going to be different depending on your motherboard. Now, if we hit enter, it's going to let us choose. Now, if you're doing this just for performance, you want to put the maximum possible, which is 170 watts. Now, if you are, however, doing this for efficiency, I recommend you either pick the 65 watts or the 95 watts. In case your motherboard doesn't have this simple configuration option, you can also input these values manually. So if you take a look here on the side, they are called PPT, TDC, and EDC. So PPT, in our case, is 230 watts in the first one, and uh, TDC is 160 amps, and EDC is 225. So in case you do not have this option, okay, in your motherboard, 
we can just go back to where we were before for the undervolt in advanced AMD overclocking, and we want to go into precision boost overdrive, and under precision boost overdrive limits, we want to put manual. And now here, we can just copy the values we had before and put them here. You can literally just copy the ones I showed you in my option and just choose whatever you prefer. So this is it if you want to do a dynamic undervolt, the one I was talking to you before, the first preset, okay? The one I recommend for most of you guys. But in case you want to do an old school overclocking slash undervolting to get the lowest possible latency out of your system, even though you're sacrificing a bit of single core performance, you want to disable the curve optimizer and actually go back into the overclocking tab and do it the old school way, which is find your CPU core ratio, okay? or CPU ratio or core ratio, depending on your motherboard. And you wanna put this to 50 to start. After you've done that, you wanna go all the way down and find your core voltage, which may also be called V-core voltage, CPU voltage, can have a lot of different names. And you wanna put it into fixed or override mode, depending on your motherboard. And as you can see, the stock voltage is 1.3. We wanna put this thing to 1.1, so a massive undervolt, which is gonna result in a lot of benefits. Now, this again, kind of like the minus 20 is gonna be stable on most CPUs, but not every CPU. So if this is unstable for you, you need to increase it this time, not decrease it. So if this is crashing, you wanna put 1.15. If you're very unlucky, you're gonna be able to do this. If you're very lucky, on the other hand, you can try to lower this to 1.075, but if you're very lucky, what I actually recommend if you're after performance is you keep this one the same and actually go ahead and increase your core ratio to 51. Because basically, I will tell you how you can play around with this a bit. The higher the core ratio, the higher the performance. And the lower the voltage, the lower the temperature and power consumption. In the dynamic option, the only thing that mattered was the voltage. Here, they are separated, okay? So if you have a lower voltage, but the same clock, you are not gonna gain performance with this method. So what you need is to increase your core ratio. So if you just want performance, for example, 1.2 volts with maybe 53, if you're a bit lucky, may actually be the best thing you can do. But again, you need proper testing for this. I'm just showing you guys how to do it. And then of course, for this one as well, you wanna go ahead and unlock your TDP. If, to, if you're after performance. If you want efficiency, TDP that doesn't matter, but I still recommend unlocking it just to be sure, okay? Well, this is really it for today's video, so I hope it was helpful. Let me know down in the comments if it works for you, and even if it doesn't, let me know why it's not working or what are your end settings, and remember your promise, drop a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in another video. I also do PC builds and cool other tech content around here. Bye-bye.